Okay, this video is for the students who uh, were absent on class on Thursday and also for folks who just wanna have it for review for over the weekend. This is how you're going to set up your final drawings and final sheets for uh, project one for basically the 2024 semester. Um, so a couple of things we're gonna kind of review. I'm gonna like verbally because a lot of the stuff I, it's already kind of fixed in my model. Um, so you're gonna first go to your floor plan and you're gonna hide any tags like elevation tags that you don't need. Now, most of you did have uh, section tags already. So I'm gonna show you, some of you might have it on the um, hidden layer. So I'm gonna just kind of show that for a second. So if you click the little light bulb, that's gonna light up pink anything that is currently hitting, hidden. So if you hid these section marks, turn them back on because we wanna have them for, um, our, we're gonna put these on our reflected ceiling plan so you can show me what you did with your dropped like cove ceilings. Some of you might've had it like shorter, like say for example, it was just through this conference room. So I want you to actually pull the little feet of these all the way out to your drawing. So you're getting the whole length and width of your building. So make sure that's all set up. So I'll just kind of verbally review. You should have your floor pattern turned off. You should have also the kind of room divider lines like that we were using here for um, like our room tags. So again, make take a couple minutes and hide all that stuff that doesn't need to be on here. What we should see on this plan is we should see kitchen and built-in cabinetry. So in my case, these are sort of built-in things. We should see all the plumbing and pieces of your bathroom on your ADA bathroom, we wanna see that turning circle. We wanna see all the equipment in the bathroom. So check a couple people had ones that um, disappeared with the furniture layer. So you can kind of turn them back on one by one where instead of hide and view category, you say unhide or hide and view element. That means it's gonna go one by one. All right, so the next thing we did was we uh, fixed what's called the crop box. So if you go down here where it looks like the little eyeglasses, you go to the left, turn that on, that turns on your crop box. So most of you have it way out here, right? Um, so let me kind of pull this over here. Um, the other thing, let me turn this on so you can see that we, we turned off these guys up here. So one of the things we noticed in class, if these guys are behaving really badly and you're uh, getting kind of a, a huge drawing coming in on your sheet, you're probably not gonna see this till later in the video. But one of the fixes we did was to move all these little guys really in tight to our drawing. We're still hiding them because again, we don't we don't need to see these. These are kind of the behind the scenes mechanisms for Revit to um, give us like north, south, east, west elevations. But here, so I'm back, back where things are unhidden again. I turned off my light bulb. My crop box is still on. So what you want to do is you want to pull this in as tight as you can. This is going to control how it fits on your final sheet. It's also going to control where it puts the title of this drawing. So what it does automatically is whatever this bottom uh, line is, it's gonna stick your title like right there. All right, so once you have that cropped in nice and tight, you then wanna turn it off. So you go back to the little eyeglasses and you turn it off like that. All right, so this is the, like your first uh, floor plan, like drawing that you were gonna put on a sheet. Now, if you go over to the sheets here, so you're gonna go down to sheets. If they're closed, you're just gonna uncheck or check on that little plus box so you can see it. You're gonna double click on A1 first floor. Oh, mine's still set up. So let me kind of delete that for y'all. Um, what's gonna happen is technically this is gonna be much bigger than it should. Um, let me pause for a minute and kind of revert it back to what you're gonna see. Okay, so this is the default template that Revit gives us. It's really nice. We're not gonna mess with it and bring in a custom smaller one. But however, um, when we first set up this project, it uses a commercial template and it makes this paper 30 inches by 42 inches, which is not what we need, it's huge. So to kind of edit this, what we're gonna do is you're gonna click on the title block itself so it kind of lights up blue. You're gonna go over here to properties and you can see here in the properties, it's 30 by 42. Now I already have loaded um, other size sheets, but I'm gonna show you how to do that because you don't have that loaded yet. So click, make sure you're kind of highlighting the, the text, the title blocks border. And then here where it says 30 by 42, right underneath it where it says edit type, you're gonna click on that. And then you're gonna pick load over here on the right. And then from this list, you're gonna be picking 22 by 34. I'm gonna say cancel because I already have it in there. But you go ahead and say open. 
and then say, okay, I'll just do it and then we'll have it there twice. All right, so now we can shift it to that. So if you click on your title block, then we're gonna click on the down arrow here and then we're gonna pick the 22 by 34. And most of us saw right away, it kind of like shrunk down on our screen, which is good, it's what we want. All right, so before you go any farther, you're gonna double click. Yours are gonna have kind of like a blank placeholder holder text right here. You're gonna double click and fill it in like you have, I have here. So it's gonna be your last name, ISD 2021 small office. Um, some folks said their font didn't fit, so it's okay to just put small office. Then first floor. Project number, we did put the class again, ISD 221. Uh, the date is when you're going to hand it to me. And actually, why don't we put the year in there too? So February 29th, 2024, drawn by yourself, checked by, put your initials, and then make sure this is A1. Um, and once we pull our drawing in, the scale and other things will fill in automatically. So now to pull in our drawings, we go back over here to Project Browser. We scroll up to Floor Plan and we drag it in. And generally it behaves pretty well. Like I said, some people had it kind of having this giant border way over here and the, the name of the drawing was way over here. That's when you need to go back to the floor plan and check where those little north, south, east, west guys are and pull them in tight. That was kind of the solution we all found in class. So other within that, this should be all set and ready to go. Um, and if you scroll in, you can see that it's got the scale there now because it, it gave it a title and then it updated it over here for you. So Revit has a lot of really nice things that are automated and work really cleanly, thank God. All right, so then the next one we're gonna do is we're gonna set up for our reflected ceiling plan. But first we need to do is, um, so I think this used to not, in an old Revit, you weren't able to rename it. You might be able to just rename it here and rename it to reflected ceiling plan. So if it lets you do that, go ahead. I also, I, just because like I said, I didn't realize that they had updated this. Oh, hold on, I gotta undo what I'm doing here. Control Z. All right, in my example, I had right clicked and said duplicate view, duplicate with detailing, because last year's version of Revit did not let you rename this for whatever reason, but they've updated that. So you can just rename this reflected ceiling plan. And then if we look at it here, you should see it here. The tags are still here also, so just leave them here. We want to have them on um, all of our plans because, again, it's it's telling the folks reading this set that there's more information to look at. So leave them there. Um, so now when we go back to um, most of you have this pre set up, this A2 first floor reflected ceiling plan. So you're going to double click and open that up. This guy is also really big, like 30 inches by 42. So you're going to click on the title block. Go over to properties, but now if you click on this drop down, you have this option of 22 by 34. I have a few more loaded because I was hoping to get us on 11 by 17 or 18 by 24, but with our dimensions, it's just, there's not enough space to do that. So that's the size now. Zooming in here, how to fill it out. Some of this will be auto filled for you already. So again, you want to update that. So author again is going to be me or your name actually. And then checker again is gonna be your initials. Um, scale, it's gonna fill in automatically as we drag our drawings in. So just make sure that it looks like that for you. Um, we talked in class, technically it'd be nice to have this in all caps, but we'd never fit that in that space there. So I'm fine with that. All right, so we're gonna go back to project browser and now you're gonna pick pull in your reflected ceiling plan. So whichever one you have there, pull that in. This one we're actually gonna park kind of at the top left corner here because we're gonna put um, our sections in here, just so we can see more of what's happening with this ceiling, um, the cove ceiling that you've all done. So to pull that in, you're going to go over to sections. You're going to open that up. So if it's closed, just click on the plus sign. We renamed them in class. So I want you to rename them section and then the description of which direction you're looking in. If you're not sure, I'll kind of open mine up and show you. Um, you're also going to have a prop box for that where you're going to help kind of Pull that in and tight. So actually I need to turn mine off there. So make sure to turn off your prop box. Um, same for your other section here. And one thing we also fiddled with in class two was the size. So if I go back to this one, note as you scroll way down here, this should be 3 16ths of an inch. This one here should also be 3 16ths of an inch. That's gonna get us nicely uh, placed on the paper. Oh, but I see I have some funky lights floating around. So I may just go and like fix those. Actually, we can do that right now. Bring them down a little bit. They're kind of 
floating up above the world there. Um, but yeah, so again, take a close look at them. Make sure everything's kind of where they're supposed to be. Again, this mine is going to look a little odd because my um, cope ceiling is at an angle. I can show you back here. Um, I have it kind of at an angle. So that's that's making it a little bit more difficult to see the the how it's functioning there. Um, so that's the two sections. So if we go back to our sheet, we go right here, bring that up. So you've got to click on the name of it. So now we're going to drag our sections in. And depending on your kind of layout and how tight things are, you might need to go back and forth and crop this box in a little bit more. But everybody did get them to fit in class. And also watch, see how as I'm putting it in, it's nicely trying to align it. That's good. We want them to all be nice and aligned like that. So we're going to also kind of move this little guy over. Um, another thing is if you don't like where these titles are placed, the way to kind of click on them and move them is you're going to click on the box itself. And then you're going to kind of like, it, it takes some finessing. See how when I hover over it, I've got the little like uh, kind of cross there. I can kind of pull it down and around, but oh, it's still attached to its drawing. They're often a real butt to move. Oh, there, I got it by itself. Um, It does take a little bit of fussing to get them kind of where you want them to be. And again, if you want to make this line shorter, you have to click on the box of the whole drawing and then this little dot pops up and now we can make it shorter. And they should run the length of your drawing, but for some folks in class, these were kind of like running into each other a little bit and see how this guy's not aligned. So spend some time just to clean it up. The nice thing is once you put them on the sheet here, see how they have a number now? Um, Revit is going to automatically fill in your section tag now. So it's saying these things are on sheet A2. This is drawing. This is section three. This is section two. So again, they're kind of nicely um, auto filling it for you, which is great. All right. The third thing we're going to do is have our furniture plan. So same idea. You want to have um, things turned off. You want to have a crop box. So again, I'm going to show you where my crop box is nice and tight. So it's kind of blocking where these little guys are. But I had to pull mine in tight just to make sure they kind of operated nicely. Um, you can, again, keep still keep the sections on here. I may go back and like move my room tag here a little bit so it's not overlapping. Um, some folks, folks took some time in class to um, fix uh, where their, their room tags were. So again, try to move them around so they're not right on top of all your furniture. You can kind of clean them up and move them around. I'll probably move this guy out. So to move this out with a leader line, make sure you have leader ch clicked on. And then I'm going to pull it like, oh, we'll pull it down here. That'll work. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So just again, take your time, clean this all up, turn off the crop box again. So we're going to turn that off. And now that what happened in Revit is A3 is already something else. I forget what it, oh, it's roof plan. So go ahead and delete the drawing that says roof plan. And now what you need to do is make a new sheet. So to do that, we're gonna go up to sheets. We're gonna say new sheet, and then you're gonna pick the 24 by uh, 34, say okay. And then once that new sheet pops up, it's gonna be way down here at the end, like unnamed, it's A unnamed. You're gonna rename it. Um, and that's where, well, first what you're gonna do is you're gonna change this number right here to A3. I can't do it on my computer because I already have A3. Revit, again, smartly is not going to let you have two sheets with the same number. So once you delete A3, now that spot is basically open. So now you can type in A3 here. Instead of unnamed, you're going to put in floor plan. Again, you're going to uh, update where it says author and check the checker with your initials. And then that one, again, once you get that one set up, that one's already the right size you need it to be because remember we told it to be... Um, we told it to be 24 by 34 there or 22 by 34. So for this plan here, again, all you're gonna do is now pull in the furniture plan and you're just gonna go like that and plop it on your sheet and that should be good to go to. All right. And so um, for those of you who were absent, like I said, I do have time Monday that I can sit with you before our field trip. Oh, this little guy's showing up. So I gotta hide him too. Um, so yeah, I may crop this in tighter, hide this guy. Actually, I can show you now just so you can see how this works. Um, there's the crop box. Oh, he is outside of the crop box, but I'm going to pull this in tighter. Um, but I'm going to definitely, I might just hide those guys though, just in case, just to make sure they're completely gone. Oh, I guess they are. Let's see what happens. So turn that back off, turn the crop box off, save that too. 
Now, all right, this is a good example. I'm glad I didn't stop right here because it doesn't um update. Like, remember how CAD will say, like, update drawing. Um, So here on Furniture Plan, it didn't actually fix it. See how it's still way over there? So all you have to do is delete it and then pull it back in. So here's the Furniture Plan, pull it back in. Um, I think if you were to close down the software and open it back up, it'll reboot itself. But this is just fast because, again, we're all trying to get them exported to PDF now. All right, so now it's sitting there and see how like this guy has moved in a little closer. It looks better. Um, we've got all of this is getting filled out the scale. Got to update this here. But then um, you should be all set to plot this stuff. And that's the next video that I recorded. So I'll send you links for both of those. Thank you.